Hi everybody, this is Marlene with Miami Ghost Chronicle Stories of the Supernatural. And today I have got a psychic medium who's an author, who's a paranormal investigator, all of the above. Her name is Vanessa Hogel, okay? And um, she, uh, something really interesting about Vanessa is that part of her ability uh, as a psychic is that she's able to draw okay what she sees she in other words uh she can produce or translate it's not only just a question of describing it she can actually draw what she's seeing especially if you know or or the picture of the entity that's communicating with her but anyway before i get to that uh let me get vanessa on okay and uh vanessa how are you doing today i'm dandy you're dandy. I love that. I love that. That's so Southern. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I grew up from Florida, but only Southerners use that dandy. I love it. From Alabama. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Well, it's like, uh, oh, hello. Um, Vanessa, I, I always ask, I, I already read your bio and I ask, uh, I always ask everybody when's their first run in with a paranormal but I think you were born, you went into paranormal mode <laughs> shortly after birth. Um, but you know what? And I'm going to let you talk about that. But what I find really interesting is this, because everybody thinks that people that have childhood experiences in the paranormal, whether they're psychic or they see something, that they automatically follow it. And for all the ones that do, there's a portion of people, especially if they're psychic, that say, forget it. I don't. They cut it off. Because either one, because of family, or two, they're just so frightened by their abilities that they totally turn it off. So what yeah. happened to you? What, how did this come about for you? Well, um, now you stop me whenever you need to. Go right ahead. Don't worry. Take it I away. Okay. Um, I, uh, well, I was two years old, the first experience that I remember, and that was my granny. Okay. Um, I was born on her birthday. Okay. Uh, March 14, 1972. She died February 5th, 1974, right before I was to turn two. Okay. Well, she was my first experience. She would come to me. And so, again, I've told people I'm very blessed that my first experience was that was a pleasant one. Uh -huh. And that that's that's all good and well. And okay. wouldn't it be great if it was that way? Um, <laughs> well, but it didn't stay that way. Um, I, uh, I remember at six, um, I've told people this before, that my mom and I were going to go rent a home in, in Alabama, closer okay. to family. Okay. I got divorced. Okay. And uh, I didn't want to go. And my mom asked me why. And I said, because he killed her in there and I don't want to go. Okay. You know? <laughs> and she says, no, you're just, no. Because even though my mom knew. I was about to ask you, was your mom already yeah. aware what your. Oh, yeah. Okay. It runs in the family. Oh, okay. So All right. Though she knew, she still poo pooed it away because this was a good okay. deal on a house, right? Sure. And there's always a chance you could be wrong. Sure. But um, she made me go, but I refused to go in the house. And so I stayed outside, and uh, my mom and the, the leasing agent or whatever it is went in the house. Less than 10 minutes later, they were both hauling ass out of the house, out through the front door. And my mom threw me in the car, and we and we drove off, and I said, what? They killed her <laughs> And uh, she said, yeah, the blood stain was still in the bedroom. Oh, my. It was still, they didn't change the carpet. There was the blood stain. And I'm like, well, I told you, you know. And then, you know, I get a little bit older. And because I've accepted it up until this point. Okay. You know, um, I've accepted that I'm different. I've accepted that I'm weird until I was 13. Why be normal? It's like, that's my I saying. Know, right? <laughs> I know, right? Um, but when I was 13. Me and um, six other girls who were also all 13. So there's seven of us and we're all 13. Uh, so apparently we're stupid too. On Halloween night, oh. we think it's a good idea to put each other in trances. Oh my out. God. Don't tell me you were the one that came up originally with that idea. I wasn't the one that came up originally, but I was the first one to go. There you go. They <laughs> just go. And... Uh, so me and this other girl, I can't disclose her name, um, she sat in front of me. Okay. I think probably the last time I sat Indian style, because my hips just don't do that shit anymore. <laughs> and um, 
that's the last thing I remember. Uh, I came to with them, one of the girls slapping me across the face, and the other girls had picked up the, the cooler of Cokes uh-huh. and ice and are pouring it over this other girl. They said that I didn't blink for 30 minutes and that the other girl started to seize. Oh. So I lost all my friends. I was about <laughs> to say after that, exactly. You, 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 said, you, you knew what I was going to ask you. Uh-huh. I imagine they must have been so wigged out with what happened. Yeah. Matter of fact, so wigged out that they really didn't. And I, I was on the cheerleading squad. I was a cheerleader with these people. They would, they would be, they would be kind to me when they had to. Not so much after, you know. Um, but so much so that when I was 18 and I was working at a place called Cafe Chicago in Wichita, Kansas. Uh huh. That girl that that happened to came in and apologized to me. Really. Found out where I was working and came in and apologized to me for how poorly I was treated after. Because she said she knew that that was not my intention. And of course it wasn't. would never do that, you know? I mean, I was And did this, did this follow you all the way through high school? Because I know kids have long memories when it comes to stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, they really do. And it's not fun. No, it's not. I kind of push everything back. I did the best I could to, to, to fit in. And um, that lasted until I had my son. Okay. When I was, that lasted until I had my son when I was 30. And when I was 32, when my son's two and he's starting to show signs, I said, nope, I'm not doing this to you. I'm not letting you go through this alone. And I kicked that door wide open of the broom closet. I hopped out and I haven't shut it since. Okay. And damn, when you kick it open, after it's been shut for so long? Yeah. Whoosh. <laughs> well, and that's what I've stop. heard of people that once they, at the beginning, it's it's kind of like you get like the, the, the worst. You see all the bad things. You like, it's like, what was I thinking of? And then, you know, yeah, I've heard of that happening where well, almost and like you, that Cassandra effect kind of thing. You bring up a really good point um, with the bad things. And I don't know, I, I've only talked to a few people who deal with this same thing, but it seems that the bad stuff is, is drawn to me. And I don't know, I mean, I know it's not because I'm a bad person, because I'm not. Sure. But like you and I were talking before the show, I, I, I don't, I try not to judge because I'm not in the time period they were in. Sure. I, I wasn't in the same situation they were in. Even today with living people, I will play devil's advocate like nobody's business. Oh, absolutely. Sometimes people do the best they can with what they got. Exactly. And, yeah. And the, 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 the main ones, it's, I, 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 guess, I guess they get drawn to me. And, I, and I've, I've dealt with that a lot lately. It's well, not bad. And you know what? There's human nature. Yeah, you've got the really, really bad people, but I think most of us are made up of good and bad. Mm-hmm. And sometimes, you know, I, you'll yeah. get a person that's more bad than, but they're not totally bad, you know, and they've, and, and, and sometimes it's also the circumstances. If there's a lot of anger involved, mm-hmm. uh, or, you know, uh, I guess what you call, you know, when people, I don't want to say unfinished business, but people that think for some reason, um, that I think sometimes is part of many intelligent hauntings that people that are done away with and nobody knows really the truth. In other words, they never get any type of justice or nobody ever knows what happened to them. And I think there's a lot of people out there that that happened to them or part of what we were talking earlier where certain things happen and the person that really is, should be held accountable never does get, you know, get brought to justice. Very true. I mean, there's so many different instances um, that can cause a spirit to be or, or to act negative towards you. Yeah, I I, I have one that stuck that that sticks to me like glue. He's actually I actually had to move my computer from my dining room into my bedroom for the longest time because my grandma won't let him in there. And you know, my grandma's dead, so we're all uh, on the same page. Uh-huh. Okay? Okay. She wouldn't let him in there. Um, she stays with me. 
but he would interfere with my internet connection there. And I have the best internet you can get in Oklahoma. So I had to move it back into my dining room. But I turned it, because he, he will walk up and down the hallway. Okay. And so I turned it to where you can't see him if he does that, so that way he's not, he's not bothering me. But people have actually seen him behind me and described him to a T. So where did you pick him up at? He, he's an attachment from, uh, from previous past lives. Really? He's, he's not good. He's not good. And only a couple of people knew what he looked like because I drew him. So Nobody knew. In other words, presently you never cross paths with him, but you've got him coming all the way from way back when? Mm -hmm. Two of my close friends, um, he attacks me in dreams, but two of my close friends have actually seen him in corporal form okay. in front of them. He attacks me badly, Andrew. Okay, so whatever happened with you guys, it must have been really bad. What did you do? I'm only kidding. I would <laughs> what did you do to him? Yeah, I am controlled by no one, <laughs> least of all him. But what was it? Okay, what is his, what anchors him to you that so strongly? Whether, be because usually the mo main motivators that you see, f see for stuff like that is either love or hate. Well, I mean, you can also have a combination of the two. Oh, sure. There's you know? what is a very thin line between love and hate. Absolutely. Very, very, very thin line. Um, also, I don't know if your viewers know this or if they know anything about me, but I, I do this, but I'm also a practicing witch. Okay. And have been every life. Okay. And I'm really good <laughs> at what I do. You and know, that, that's a part of the attachment. Your because I, I will control. be controlled. With this entity. Okay. Yes. Yeah. He was there when they hung me. I was about to say, this sounds like somebody that was either a religious figure or law. And sometimes they were both, depending on what time period we're talking about. You know. Oh. That those were the well, ones that usually were the ones that gave the final say-so on. Yeah. I was, I did a, a remote viewing for NP Paranormal in Sheffield, England. That's one of the teams I work with over there uh -huh. while I'm here. And the way that we always did it with them is they would go to a location. They would never tell me beforehand where it was. I would just give them the information. Right. And I had there. Well, one of the locations ended up being a place called Nine Lady Stone Circle. And I was telling them what to ask and everything else. Um, and it was funny. I told Carl uh, Porter, who was part of NP Paranormal, I, I said, you know, put your hand on the stone. Because I knew what would happen. And they immediately got an EVP that said, take your hand off the stone. Oh. I'm like, ha, ha, I told you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know. But they also, <laughs> they also I mean, they, they do all their stuff live. Okay. It's all live. So there's no hubbub. There's no graphics. There's nothing. Right. Uh, they got an EVP live asking, where is Vanessa? Now, yeah. And they were actually, you can actually go on their YouTube, pull it up. Okay. And you'll, hear, you'll see the guys saying, okay, we understand you're asking where Vanessa is. She's all the way in Oklahoma, <laughs> you know. Okay. Um, but that, the woods just outside of Nine Ladies Stone Circle is where I was hung. Wow. Many, 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 many moons ago. You know, and, <laughs> I, and you know what? You brought up something really important, Vanessa. A lot of people don't realize that at least in the United States, they did not burn witches. They hung them. You know that, well, right? This, this was in England, and they, and they really? hung me. I know in England, they did, uh, they they, did do yeah. fire and hanging. But in mm, the United they, States, at least recorded cases, mm. now, was, I will tell it was, you it was usually I hanging. Heard. And other things that they did to them, but. Well, and one of the reasons a lot of people don't realize why they would do the hanging and the burning mm -hmm. was because technically you're not spilling blood. Right, so if yeah. you're being, yes, if you're being um, killed by a religious sect. And yeah, by the letter of the law, yeah, I see what you're saying. No, exactly. And you're not allowed to spill blood. That's how they dispose of you is by um, hanging and by burning. Now, I will tell you one place, and I haven't researched it yet, but I was just there, and I can guarantee you they burned witches. 
and that was in Richmond Town, Staten Island. Really? We rolled into that town, and I about threw up. I could feel it. I, it was just, it was not good. Mm-mm. <laughs> and what, well, made, you know what? I know, uh, despite, you know, how much history is chronicled or written, you know, preserved, I know that a lot of stuff, and in and, and all aspects, historically, have gone on that never got recorded. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. Because, I mean, who wants to record that? Hey, we set this chick on fire. Yeah. You know? I mean, <laughs> no yes. one. Yes. Even then, it wasn't something to be proud of, even when they were doing it. Yeah. yeah. You know? I mean, that's why a lot of them had issues after. I'm not saying nothing, but, no. you know. Um, but it's, but yeah, I mean, so that's one of the attachments that I have. So, the, the okay, status. now let me ask, okay, now and that you brought us, you brought, doesn't that make life really difficult for you to have this person, like, uh, yeah, all the time. <laughs> well, let me put it this way. I'm 45. I'm single. I'm staying that way <laughs> because it's just too hard. It's too hard. It's too hard to deal with a living person in your home and a dead person in your home. But how does, how about your son? My son, I've raised to understand how all this works. I and mean, he actually does very well. No, no, but I'm saying as far as his entity is concerned, does he's easy he hands? Leave him alone. But my son has one that's been with him since birth that there ain't no way this guy's coming near him. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I was thinking. Yeah. He's very well protected. My son knows he's there. Right. But this guy won't mess with my kid. Have you ever tried to get rid of him? That's a tricky question, and I'm going to be very honest. Um, and I'm not being a martyr. No, I know. Not, I, 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 don't worry about it. But I know that I know because of what he's done in the past and how he's terrorized my friends. That if I try to get rid of him, I've blocked him. He's not hurting me anymore. Right. But if I try to get rid of him, I I worry about what he would do to others. Really. Yeah. In other words, you're saying he wouldn't go quietly off into the sunset? <laughs> no, ma'am. <laughs> no, ma'am. He would not. Matter of fact, the third book that's coming out September 30th mm -hmm. is called Walking with Ghosts. And it's all about the England and Scotland and Virginia investigations and travels and, you know, what I saw and what we went through there. And um, I'm. it's very, very, very candid. I took the pretty out of it. Let me ask you something. Does this spirit, does he stay put at home when you go traveling or has, does he go with you? It, pretty much he stays here. Okay. Pretty much he stays here. Um, and I don't know if that's just because that's where he feels comfortable. I don't know. Okay. I don't know if it's just being around my things. Um, now, when we went through our footage. Right. From England and stuff. Oi. Yeah. Whew, I mean, we had, there's one picture that uh, we took off of uh, the pier in Whitby, England. Okay. And I don't know if you know anything about Whitby. It's such an amazing place. But they only have a beach during the daytime. At night, the tide comes in, comes straight up to the cliff, so there's nothing. Okay. okay? Midday, we're on the pier about 500 feet away, if not more, is this huge ball of orange light. <laughs> All right. Huge. Huge ball and, of orange And you were like, okay, <laughs> where or? Yeah. And what happened? Where did this started. come from? Yeah. There's nothing reflective. There was nothing there. It's March in England. No one's sunbathing on this beach, I can assure you. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's huh. And yeah, it's about, about 500, 600 feet away. And it is about the size of a beach ball. And how long was it there? Oh, maybe five minutes or so. You must have been like, okay. Then we have them um, outside the um, the cemetery that sits above ground okay. over the Hellfire Caves. Which I actually, the Hellfire Caves are connected to me and to the dude that's stuck in my house. Um, oh my God, but, really? Yeah. yeah. The and hellfire. One my, yeah. One of my very dear friends, um, Chris Loper, he and I have past life history together. 
we both have dealt with this dude. Really? <laughs> we both dealt with him in the Hellfire case. Okay, because that yeah. narrows that down considerably. You know that, right? Yeah, well, I am. as far as who were, even though there's always been a lot of debate as to who was actually going to the Hellfire Caves, you know, but a whole lot more people than oh, I'm they sure think there was. that. Um, I, let me let me address one other thing on that because I'm sure everybody's seen it. I've only seen bits and pieces of it because I think they're a joke. But um, wait, Ghost wait, Adventures. Wait, I want to be psychic now. I know who you're talking. <laughs> about. All right. <laughs> Yeah, if I say joke, you know who I mean, right? Yes. Um, okay. Yeah, because damn. But um, I, I was actually at the Hellfire case, and I know that they had talked about the this particular room that when you take the the, the River of Sticks back to this particular room, yes. And they're trying to figure out, you know, what's in there and what did people go in there for and blah blah blah. Uh, and I'm sorry, they got it so wrong. It's a ritual sex room. It's, I mean, you can see them doing it. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you can well, see it happening, you know? Yeah. And I'm just like, why did they not do their research, you know? But, um, but yeah, so just to clear that up for everybody, that, that chamber, that inner, that inner sanctum right. was for rich sex. I believe it. Yeah. And it's, ew, it's icky, you know? But, yeah, but that's what that was used for. Um, but, yeah, the, the cemetery up top, there's, um, this large stone structure and there's the other cemetery that's just off the back of it right. with a little church orbs, big orange, just all over, you know, got pictures of those. Of course, the books are going to be in black and white, okay. but you can still see them. Just know they're orange, um, but never, never felt, aside from Mr. Boots in Scotland, right. never felt anything negative okay. towards me necessarily. When we got to Virginia, that was a completely different story. And you were okay. telling me a little bit about that, and I would love, Vanessa, if you could talk about that, because let me tell you something. What you described is, like, incredible. Awful. It's awful. Through. Yeah, I'm saying <laughs> um, incredible, but, it, yeah, the yeah. word is awful. It, it sucked. Um, we, were, we were asked to come to a private residence because there were children involved. And thank heavens, now the family no longer resides at this at this residence. Okay. They actually have gotten out, which we are ever so grateful for. Okay. Um, but I flew there. They it knew I was coming. Okay. It knew we were all coming together. Um, anything that you could think of that could happen to keep me from getting there happened. Paranormal but, sabotage. Yep. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. From and this was. Uh, a week before I left, um, three Puritan-style women had actually come into my living room. Um, <laughs> I know, right? I'm laying on the couch, and uh, one, uh, two of them, the younger ones, are standing at my legs, and the other one is sitting at my head with the long black dresses and the white um, like apron-style yeah. things over yes. her hat. She's holding her teacup, and she just keeps telling me, it's almost time, dear. It's almost time. Well, that was a week before I left. And okay. I'm keeping in contact with with uh, Gwen Clapper and Chris Loper from BPI, Beyond Perception Investigators, about all this. Gwen's got all of my drawings, everything else. And um, so I get on a plane. I'm getting ready to get on a plane to go. Delayed flight. Canceled flight. Oh. Stuck in Chicago. My ride, who was supposed to be coming to get me, flat tire in a thunderstorm and flooding. <laughs> You yeah, think? yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let yes. me tell you something. Yeah. And they were really trying yeah. to get you not to go or so, turn back or just whatever. It was ridiculous. Um, but I finally get there, okay. and we hit the ground running. Okay, we've got a, we literally investigated probably for, okay from eight o'clock in the morning till ten o'clock at night. Every day I was there. Okay. We, we were either investigating or on our way or coming back from an investigation. From 8 a.m. till 10 p.m., no questions asked. But the private residence that we went to was was the big one. This is this is where the nasties really came out and everything bad that could happen happened. Um, we were going to do a two-day investigation there. 
And keep in mind, it's a residence. How many residences? This, this is the place that you said the family has since moved away from. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, but we we came there and off camera, Gwen and I interviewed one of the children because he's a minor. Mm-hmm. Um, but we, there, but there's the audio of it. You just can't see him. Okay. All, all this on their YouTube channel. Um, but in this investigation, both uh, well, Chris, myself. And Gwen were all severely attacked, badly. At the same time, or individually, when you were off by yourself? Individually, it hit us all night long, and then started wow. again the next day. Um, as I was telling you, at one point in time, I am on the floor of this residence in the living room. I guess with my hands like claws, covering my eyes, okay. screaming bloody murder. And Gwen sends her daughter, Alyssa, out to the car to get something that I would bought for her in England called a witch's wand. Right. And it's, a, it's a particular stone. Okay. And she held it. And it's like I said, there's seven witnesses to this entire event. Um, she's holding it to the back of my head, says it's burning her hand. Finally gets my hands off my eyes. And she says, my eyes are, are changing yellow and red. <laughs> I have green eyes, people. <laughs> oh, my God. Did they do like two steps back away like <laughs> her eyes? You know, I mean, I'm just saying this This is apparently was not a good look for me. Okay. Um, I, want, yeah. I know. I can laugh about it now. I know. I know. I, I know it's different. Die. I know that when you're there, it must have been very frightening. And now let me ask you something. About why? I mean, was this because are we ta- what was was there something about the spot that concentrated negative entities? What was it that was going on that they just did that full-on attack like that? Or were we talking non-human entities? We're getting to that. Um, oh, yes, we are. <laughs> oh, yes, we are. Of course. <laughs> um, because I am not one. No, I'm not. Me. I'm not. I'm not either. I'm not. So but around the, what you're the describing. Yes. Does I'm not one to throw around the D word. Mm-hmm. But. Yeah. Okay. Um, even though it never came into the house, it had power, but also keep in mind that the name of this episode is called too many tenants and they're not shitting. Okay. It is the truth. Um, there are Haitian slaves there. The entire, the entire slave quarters that was on this property is the kitchen of this house. Are you kidding the me? Entire slave quarters. So, okay, and, and 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 you know what? And I want to bring this because a lot of people sometimes don't realize how certain locations they have layer upon layers oh, of things. Yes. And then, yeah, by the time you get to present day, that's when you've got stuff like what you're describing going on. So basically, you're telling me apparently this house at one point, ha- they had slaves. Okay, so <laughs> great place, yeah, for the kitchen. Wonderful. Yeah. So. Oh yeah. Here you've got. That first layer, which is slave quarters yeah. inside the actual house where people live. And then what happened yeah. after that? Because I'm um, sure it went all downhill from there. It, it Pretty much. Yeah. Um, the, the slaves are what I believe and what Gwen, I believe what Gwen believes. We'll just say me, what I believe. Okay. Is what brought this demon. I'm okay. going to go ahead and use the word because people know I throw that shit around. I know. I, I understand. Um, but they're what brought this there. Okay. They brought this there um, as punishment for other things. Well, it backfired in a big fucking way. Okay? okay. There is, when you go down the driveway, you literally pull up to the house. This, okay. This house has been added on to. To the left is one barn, another little barn, the tree in which they did their uh, rituals okay. in. Okay. This is a tree that is literally hollowed out from fire, but growing. So, in outside. other words, I want to I want to interrupt you real quick. What you're saying is that this entity was invoked. It didn't just yes. come in as a result of dark deeds. It was invoked or called in. It was invoked. Okay. It was invoked, and it ain't the only place in Virginia that's happened. Um, but um, so that you have the house here, and then to the right, down back in the woods, but not too terribly far from the house, is another barn. Okay. That is where this entity lives. Now really? here's the key. Yes. Here's the kicker. This is not an animal barn. This is a people barn. A there people is, barn? Okay. Yeah. 
explain um, that, please. You, that because you walk like, into the barn. I mean, you always think of a barn as for animals, unless what you're housing people as animals. Is that what happened? Mm -hmm. That's exactly what happened. Um, a, a standard barn, you know, I'm not from the South. I've been in plenty of barn, okay? Standard <laughs> barn has its stalls on either side, you know, right. and its doors are halfway down so you can see over them, check your animals without opening up the doors. Right. How many barns have you seen where the animal has to step down two and a half feet to get into the stall? Nowhere. And that you, the door, you, there's no there's no animal I can think of. No. That you would First do that off, for. Yeah, you wouldn't do that with any cattle because they have no. to stay upright. If they break a leg, you're killing yeah, exactly. them. Exactly. You're out, you're out cattle or horse or whatever. Exactly. Um, the doors went all the way to the ceiling. They had bars coming down on the front of the doors. Once you're in that stall, there was literally no way to get out. No wow. way. To yeah, get you out. don't do that for a cow or a horse. No, and they're lining both sides. They're lining both sides. So this is a people barn. Yes, it um, is. Women and children mostly. Wow. When we were inside this barn, first as we're walking up to it, and we had already been out in the clearing in front of it, where they have one of those large... Um, I like those spool things they've turned into a table. You know, the big spools for the for the twine. Yeah, I've seen it. it. You turn them over and you, it's like a big giant table. Yeah, I know what you mean. Exactly. Ten minutes before we had been out there, nothing on it. We come back out there after Chris got attacked going again to, to check it out yeah. when that was happening to me. We come back out there and the entire table is covered in maggots, centipedes, and spiders. The entire table, so much that they're falling off the corners, uh, the, the sides of the table. And I imagine at this point, did this, did you realize before then what you were dealing with? Or was this your first sign that this is like, not dark, like really, really like. We kind of knew, but Gwen and I and, and Chris as well. And plus the home, the, the renters were there with us. Right. So this wasn't something where we kicked them out. They were there with us. Okay. Uh, we we all might do this, but I'm still one of the biggest skeptics you will ever meet. I totally you, understand. Yeah. I, I, to me, the, you have to be skeptical to be a good paranormal Absolutely, investor. Absolutely, yes. Absolutely. And, uh, and even doing what I do, question me. Don't yeah. believe me at face value. Question yeah. me, you yeah. know. Mm -hmm. um, but so we kind of knew, but. We got a no, no. So you were well, hoping uh, for the best, and I was hoping for the best. I'm telling you, and uh, but when you see bugs like that, and that's you're like, "Fuck, that's, that's a lot of bugs." That's like, I'm, there's how do you do that? You can't just bring buckets of maggots and centipedes and spiders that's and just dump them somewhere. That's you know, like God. Mm -hmm. We start doing. Um, an EVP session and what's those little spirit box doohickeys what SB something yeah, or whatever I know what you're talking about I don't have any of that stuff um, mm -hmm. <laughs> we oh, just yeah. use theirs you're, you're, but, you're, uh, you're it yeah I'm it you know and um, we start doing that and it's telling us to shut up get out everything and me? then the lovely odor of rotting meat that's it that's the clincher yep. right there oh yeah lovely odor of rotting meat comes in and uh then we go in and we check the barn i think i'm getting the sequence of events right um because i think we did that before we went in or we did that after we went in and came out but either way we checked out the barn i told them what that barn was came back out and we all oh by the way when we were in the barn it's and this is all on video it's answering us in stomps like this oh let me ask you something. What did they, yeah. I mean, I know that usually if you're any paranormal investigator with your salt, you might be scared, but you're okay. Like, okay, this, what did these people, renters, whoever they were, what did they do? Did they kind of like run out or leave? <laughs> cookies. They stayed with us. Really? Good for them. They did. They stayed with us. Now, keep in mind, this barn doesn't have an upper floor. This is on the roof. Wow. Yeah. So it was, but the, no, they were tough. They stuck it out because at this point, we're like, we're all in this together. No one's leaving no one, you know. Sure. Um, but 
if, if people watch this, they need to watch it on a computer or listen with headphones because if you watch it on your phone, you won't be able, be able to hear it very well. You put it on the computer, you can't not hear it. Um, it's answering in the amount of stomps like this. Boom. When I wow. tell it everything. And at one point in time, it starts to play with me. And so I yell at it. I'm like, don't you do that. Don't you play with me. You know, and then you hear it go from one end to the other. And so wow. that's when we walk out and uh, we, we start to get the weird feeling that it's actually looking down at us. Yes. And me, Gwen and Chris all look up and you can see it on the top of the barn. At least oh. we can. And it looks, if you can imagine, go, go to your best sci-fi memory bank uh -huh. and, and imagine a human that's completely black, like blacker than black. Okay. Like night, like ink, but it's shaped like a spider. Oh, God. And it Jeez. spans the top of the barn at an angle. So it's, its legs are towards the end of the roof over here, and then its other legs are wrapped over the peak of the barn here, and you can see it. And then all of a sudden, somebody who I'd actually gotten their name when we were in the house, her name is Sarah, I'd actually gotten her name, and she was following me around, and you can see the little orbs and everything when I'm talking to her. Right. Um, she inhabited Gwen. Okay. It was one of her children that had been taken into that barn and used by the people that own that barn. Oh, my God. Yes. And it's horrifying to watch Gwen has no memory of it the only thing she would like I have no memory of being taken over in the living room uh-huh she has no memory of this she's only seen the video because all of this is on video um I'm having to talk we're having to physically pick up Gwen and move her as she's screaming and kicking and fighting and moving her away from that barn just so I can get Sarah to release her because I know who's in her. Right. And I, she, I know she doesn't mean any harm. Yeah. You're... She wanted somebody to know my baby was in there. Okay. My baby was in there. And you can actually see, I mean, you can't physically see it with your eyes, but you can see what happens to her body when Sarah leaves her. Right. Yeah. And it is one of the most unreal experiences I've ever had in my life. I'm so used to being on the receiving end of it. People yeah, to that. actually see somebody. And let me ask you, was this entity holding all these human spirits captive there? Because that's, I've heard of that before. Pretty much that's, that's what it was like. Um, because it wasn't the entity that was hurting them when they were living. Right. Necessarily, uh, except for through the humans that, that were living there at the time. Okay. But it, what was holding on to them after. After, death. when they were dead. Yes. Wow. It's like, you know, the feeding of the souls type of thing. Okay. And, um, but the, here's a very, very strange thing. After all that, when, because Chris had scratches down his back, I was beat up, Gwen was just, bless her, you know, we all went up to the house, had her watch the footage so she could see what happened. Okay. And, and, and I was just spent. I was done. I bet. So, and things felt a little better. So, I went to lay on the couch in the living room because things felt a little better. I'm like, okay, you know what? Hey, nothing be worth that, right? Okay. okay. Famous last words. Well, everyone else, I guess, is on the front porch. It's got one of those big, long, covered front porches. And uh, I went and lay down on the couch. Next thing I know, well, I heard a train. I heard a train. I woke up hearing a train very loud. There's okay. no train near there, okay? Not going anymore. Okay. That's what I remember. I woke up in Gwen's car facing the opposite direction of how she was parked. Come to find out, I had ran out the front door in the middle of the night down their mile and a half long gravel driveway being led, I know, to what was going to be my death. I know wow. where they were taking me. Where were they taking uh, you? 
they were take there was a another person who was a member of this family who invokes things and likes to dabble and likes to play and I was going to try to go to that property and help this other person kind of knock some sense into him, you know, spiritually. Yes, I know. <laughs> and um, and I, uh, this other person was told that if I did that, that, you know, that I, I'd, I'd get killed. Well, that's where they were leading to me. That was their safe place. Come to find out railroad tracks run right next to this other property. And that's what it's you were hearing. A few miles away. And that's where I was heading. That's where they were taking me. Chris is um, ex-Army combat veteran. Okay. Been in war. Seen some shit. Knees are shot. He had to chase me down and tackle me in this gravel driveway. And everybody, I guess, got up around him. Mm -hmm. And um, they, they said Gwen was holding on to me trying just basically screaming at these things to get out and they said when I finally screamed which I guess is my thing I guess that's how they're coming out so I have to yell like a little girl right um, I, it was like one of those weird prolonged multi multiple person type screams like you hear in TV Wow and I have no memory and I'm forever grateful for that I don't want to make of that just knowing what they told me is enough. Vanessa, do you think that they were when in that barn where you you saw this thing? Do you think that later on, at some point, they were whatever acts they were committing there was in a way like to appease it or sacrifice them to it, even if they weren't killing? I think very well possible. Um, the one thing that I have found in Virginia is that land is saturated. Really, it is saturated. Uh, more so than any other place I've ever been, ever. And like I said, I have spent time in England, Scotland, New Orleans, Staten Island, here in Oklahoma, where they had plenty of battles and stuff. Mm -hmm. Nothing, nothing compares. To and what, what happened? Felt. Did the family who owned it, did they hold it for a while, or did it go through a lot of different owners? What was the history on the people that were there? It's, they can't keep, can't keep runners. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. That's why. That's why I was going with that. Even when it's dirt cheap, can't keep runners. Yeah. And but the funny thing was, is Gwen and I went back right. to bless uh, to, to to cleanse the house um, after the fact. Okay. And uh, within a week of us doing that, and the family was told, and they abided by mm -hmm. not going anywhere near that side of the property because you're actually talking about eleven acres. Okay. Uh, this 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 small section of land, it, okay. which is over like 100 or 200 acres, um, but what they had was 11. Okay. And uh, uh, going out there and basically feeding this thing with with their energy, the forest or the woods around it took it over. Really. Literally took it over. About how far away was it? Would you say what a quarter of a mile, or was it closer to the house? Closer way closer Ooh. yes but anytime they would get anywhere close even in their backyard um they were trying to do uh, have a bonfire or something like that so right. they picked up the can and threw it and caused a big old fire um they had people coming out to mow the lawn they told the people do not go to this area mm -hmm. just leave it high it's okay right First thing the guy did, brand new mower off the showroom floor. Had never mowed a lawn with it. Went I, straight over there, killed it. There you go. <laughs> killed Told it. you. I'm like, what the fuck? You know, I'm going to yeah. tell you not to do something. Just don't do it, you know? Yeah. Um, but it's just, the land there is saturated. It is, it's... And there's so much negativity that it does bleed onto the generations that come after. So what happened? This fi this family finally said, "That's it. We're out of here." Yep. I don't blame them. Yep. No. No, they're out of there. Um, and I'm I'm so thankful because nobody needs to live in that. No. You know, needs to not be what you're describing. Yeah. No. But it's not the only place. It's like that, and it's not even owned by the same person. 
Really? We had an instance. Yeah, we had an instance the last time I was there. Uh, I took my son there in March. So that was June. I took my son there um, in March of this year. And we went for a week. And um, we were out investigating in the woods um, off the side of what we call the Revolutionary House. And these episodes are coming out now. Okay. Um, we were led to the same barn three different times. In really? the forest. Where we had walked in different directions. I was about to say, what was it, like a groundhog kind of thing? Like, here we are again? Okay, here we are again. Pretty much. Pretty much. Wow. When we went into it the first time, we, we stayed in it about 10 seconds because the, the, the male meter spiked to 5.7. Okay. And the black shadow went across the top of it. And we said, nope, we're out. I was about and, to say so. Yeah. I had my boy with me, so I'm not I'm not subjecting him to anything like that. We walked in one direction for 45 minutes to an hour in a completely opposite direction. Ended up right outside this barn again, face in the front of it. Said, wow. no. Nope. Went another direction. Walked for 45 minutes to an hour, total opposite direction. Came right out, right in front of it, same barn. It makes no sense. And you must have been and like, had okay. a, And had a millimeter spike to 8.6. And that you must have said, you I know, know what? That. I'm not gonna go for another walk. Let's just. Like... Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, eight point six is fucking unheard of. I've never heard of anybody getting that. And I, I'm, was, what, that, was it? Was this like an abandoned barn, or was yes, it... yes? What we found out though, this abandoned barn had a um, had a basement underneath it where oh. they kept slaves in shackles go. there you go that's where yeah yep 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 and i'm just like and i really do believe that aside from the aside from the civil war and the revolutionary war history mm -hmm. i do believe the main cause of a lot of this problem in virginia paranormally speaking is the anger and and the understandable anger right. from the slaves that were brought there it's understandable. Yep. You know, and the sad part about it is if you didn't conjure it, you can't get rid of it. <laughs> you imagine? Yeah. Oh yeah. I can I can absolutely imagine. There's just yeah. so I mean, and like you and you know, um like what we were talking about early. You know, sometimes especially when this happened maybe what, hundred and fifty years ago or whatever, sometimes people's motivation you know the optics of what you look at now mm -hmm. it might not really truly be the situation where people take certain actions back then yeah well and the thing is i mean one of the houses we went to predates the revolutionary war really god yeah far... uh-huh well yeah that's right virginia is one of the oldest you know settlements in the country as far as it's a still standing structure that predates the Revolutionary War. Wow, that's unusual because I know, I've heard of houses being built on foundations mm -hmm. of really old, but that's incredible. It's the actual structure. And what happened in that house, because it was a house and a tavern and everything mm -hmm. else, um, there was so much rape, so much incest, so many dead babies buried on that property. Um, that the first time I went there in June of 2016, right. was it 16? Uh, yeah, um, that I was on my knees in the front yard just almost vomiting. I was so sick and just crying. I couldn't even get off the front porch myself. And this was, what was it, a private home now? Um, it's owned. Nobody lives in it. It's unlivable. Um, but <sighs> it is. It is a, it is owned. Um, there's also another structure on the land that when I say things bleed into the ground and affect other areas, they yeah. do. They do. Wow. Um, yes, and that house is not a good one. And I wouldn't live in it for love or money. If you gave it to me for free and offered me a million bucks to live there, due to what has, has bled into that ground and those walls, I wouldn't touch it. I wouldn't go anywhere near it. And the sad part about it is, is um, I told Gwen and Chris okay. that, that, that about the babies that were buried on the property. Mm -hmm. Well, when I came back in March with my son, I was much stronger 
and I wasn't letting it affect me that way, but I still knew what I knew. Okay. And I told him two days before, I said, you know, I, I'm seeing another house and I, I don't know where it is, but I described it to her. Oh, well, that was two days before we went back to the revolution, revolutionary house and we're walking around. We've went to the grotesque house that I just yuck. The next episode I think is about that. Um, and we went to the revolutionary house. We started walking the property and about a quarter of a mile back from the property is the house I described to her two days before. Okay. And it was, it's been confirmed. It was the help that lived in that house. Oh, really? And she confirmed the burying of the babies. But was this... She didn't want to. She didn't want to. Okay. But she had a choice. Well, that's what I'm saying. Sometimes when things happen, mm -hmm. you know, people do the best they can under the circumstances. And unless you're there... That's why I said, that's why I think a lot of them talk to me is because I don't judge. You know, because I mean, I, I I'm not in their in their shoes. I'm not I'm not having to hear you do this or I'm killing you, your kids. I'm not having I'm not on the receiving end of that. All I'm doing is getting the energy and the message that that they need to give to me. Right for whatever reason. And Vanessa, haven't you found that some of these places exact exact well, like what you were describing that they've been around for such a while so that there's a history. And like you said, sometimes it's like they, they can't, th there's no escape from dark occurrences there, even though you have different sets of people living there. Mm -hmm. Don't you find that it makes you wonder what is it that keeps pulling back people and circumstances to reproduce all these horrible things? It's like, what is it? Is it, is it like you said, something that it's in the ground? Uh, I believe so. I really do. Um, there was so much slavery action. Okay. Uh, so many people that had so much fear and anger and resentment and mad skills. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That they were able. They were able to curse, for lack of a better word. And I don't. I don't like to throw that word around either. Yeah. But when you have the property owners confirming what you've said and confirming that it's happened in recent history, not just then. Then see, you start to see it line up and you're like, damn, you know what? Sometimes I just wish, I wish we didn't know these things because there's no way to stop it. Well, and that's, and this is the thing. I mean, sometimes bad things happen. That's life. You know, you're going to go to yeah. certain places historically sometimes like, let's say 150 years ago, infant mortality was really high. Women would die after childbirth. And it wasn't just, there was no supernatural thing involved. It was just, that was the quality of human life at that time. Okay, it's not like, oh, but when you start seeing these places that you go to, <laughs> when you look at the history, it's like tragedy after tragedy after like, it's like, okay, there's too much of a pattern here. It makes you wonder what yeah. is it that act reproduces all this over and over and over again. And I mean, I, I think, and just like using, um, uh, you know, I, I've seen stuff on Lint Mansion and the suicides and yes, everything. Yes, right, right. There. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that in many cases mo some people are more susceptible to psychic energy sure. and um, to being inhabited or affected by historical events than others. Sure. You might sure. have some people like Amityville Whorehouse, you can have some people that move in there don't have a problem at all. All it takes is that right combination. Yes. You know, and young children is a huge part of it. You got yes. young children, they're going to be more susceptible. You have prepubescent girls, definitely going to be more mm -hmm, susceptible. Mm -hmm. You have yes. any adults that have any type of psychic ability, mm -hmm. unless they know to block it, it's yes. going to be very hard. And even sometimes it's too damn hard to block. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm good, but I ain't that damn good. Well, you know, I mean, no one is. And haven't you noticed that a lot of these really um, long time haunted houses that are really truly haunted not the ones that everybody says and then when you get there you're like yeah right and i'm going to give you the example of the lemp like you said the lemp mansion that a lot of them have some type of subterranean either caves mines tunnels basements cellars mm -hmm. i don't know why that's a common denominator not with just hauntings or paranormal events dark stuff really dark oh. stuff 
Well, I mean, we have to, we have to look at it this way: is we have a really dark history, yeah. darker than people even realize. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm not even saying my people's. You know, I mean, witches and stuff. I mean, we have been degrading and violating and and persecuting and imprisoning each other since time began. Yeah. You know, and when you have areas that have the perfect little hidey holes for that, <laughs> or the, or, you know, you have, a, there was one place, I want to say it was Bel Air House, but I could be wrong, um, where uh, I did a remote viewing for um, my publisher when he was up there with the team. I think okay. it was Bel Air House. Um, you know, you have the areas around there that have the, you know, the mines. And, yes, and, there was a lot of know, accidents in those mines. Exactly. You're talking about a whole lot of pissed off dead people. Yes. Yeah. You know? I mean, you just are. And it's, I mean, the two biggest contributors to any type of paranormal activity is fear and love. Yes. Fear yes. and love. You know? And because everything negative can be bred out of fear. Everything positive can be bred out of love. You know, so when you're talking about areas that have seen an immense amount of tragedy, mm -hmm. you know, there's just there's just no way that you're ever going to get rid of all of that. Now, like in England and Scotland, it, it's tamed a little bit, but I have a feeling that's more to do with cultural differences, right? Than it is to the actual activities, because they do act completely different than they do over there. And like I told you in Staten Island. You know, you have your ones that want to talk, and then you got your good fellas that you know think that you know if you're a snitch after it's that, it's like you're that's still it, man. You know, um, and which is, and you know what? That's normal when you're talking that awareness that that that's their their emotional makeup. They still keep that emotional makeup. They do. They absolutely do, and it was so frustrating because I'm like, dude, your dad, you can just talk, just talk. <laughs> yeah. You know, it can't get any worse than that. <laughs> I know, right? I promise you, you're good, okay? Um, but yeah, it's just it's it's really bizarre. And then in then in Louisiana, um, when I'm in New Orleans, the first time I ever got taken over that I can recall happened in New Orleans, oh, and it God. happened the very first. Oh yeah, it happened the very first time I ever went there. And uh, we were I've told this before. We were standing outside Mother's, which okay. is in the business district of of New Orleans. Our last day there, we're going to have to be leaving soon. And I'm like, I just okay. have to go to Marie Laveau's tomb. I have yes. to. We didn't know where it was. We had no idea. So we're standing outside Mother's and we're talking. Uh -huh. And the three girls that were with me said, um, they, they said that all of a sudden that I dropped my head down, lifted it back up, and I was just gone. I wasn't there anymore. And they said I turned around and took off running. And <laughs> they must have. They what? said they, I know, right? Um, Where's they she going? caught up with me. <laughs> and I was like, where the hell is she going? <laughs> uh, they caught up with me outside St. Louis number one. Okay. Uh, the little grass median in between the, the lanes. Uh huh. They said, I put my hand up, said just a second, walked straight into the cemetery, walked straight to Marie Laveau's tomb. Wow. I have no recollection. I couldn't tell you. I know I was at Mother's. I know I woke up at the tomb. I did not know I ran 18 blocks. Wow. Yeah. I ran over a mile. <laughs> Just, and what? Y'all can't see it, but I'm five foot two and squishy. I don't run. <laughs> <laughs> Unless somebody makes you run. Well, somebody makes me run. Um, second I've heard time, now that, unfortunately, some of those uh, cemeteries in New Orleans, now you got to pay to get in them. You do. We went there in September of last year, and you do. But I've already been there, so I'm good. Um, second time that happened, different set of girls with me. Mm -hmm. I was at Red Zombies. I'd been there plenty of times. And uh, about a 200-pound man sat on my shoulders. I had to walk out of the building. Okay. My, yeah, my friend uh, Jana... Uh, Parker walked out with me. I leaned against the building, and that's the last thing I remember. I woke up on my back on the sidewalk in front of Jacques St. Germain's house. And she said that she had caught up with me because I took off running again. And that when they caught up to me, that I was trying to break in to this house. Really? 
that I was trying the doors. I was trying the windows. I even went around the little side area and tried a side door. Um, she said that she was yelling in my face, trying to get me to snap out of it. And then I looked at her like I had no idea who she was. And when I figured out I couldn't get the doors open, I went, I laid down on the ground, put my knees up, my eyes open. And I've got three girls standing over me like this. And I'm like, what the fuck? Really? Again? <laughs> We're going to have to hobble her. <laughs> I know, right? But it's but they never tried to hurt me. No, I know, I know. I know, but still, think about it. The ones in Virginia did. The ones in Virginia did. The ones in New Orleans never tried to hurt me. But that's kind of like my mecca. Okay. So I don't, I don't ever think that they would. How yeah. weird is that? <laughs> no. You know what? It, I think it has a lot to do. I know this might sound weird, but it's the quality of the entities over there. You just got dead people. It sounds like in Virginia, I, it's something. Wow, much darker than just dead I, people. It is much darker. It's much darker. But then you have your your soldiers, who were so polite. You know, when um, the very first investigation we did was at Sailors Creek. Mm -hmm. before we ever got to the residence. And uh, I, I, I told Gwen, I said, you know, whenever you pull in there, just, just slow the car down, I'm going to hop out. <laughs> you know? And that's what, she, that's what they did. And I'm running off into this field, and poor little thing, her little legs. She's trying to chase after me with, a, with an iPad or whatever it is to, <laughs> to film me. And I'm having to put my hands over my ears, and I'm like, stop, you know, because it's just too much. And I swear they did. They did. It was almost as if they formed a line. And it went like in rank. And they were being very courteous. Okay. They were trying to get their message across. Um, everything they told me, everything, Gwen, after much, 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 much digging, has been able to confirm. Wow. The direction they came from. The direction they said they should have went they wouldn't have had as much loss of life um what happened to the people that owned the hillman house in the basement okay everything she was able to confirm down to their names of the ones that spoke to me and you know what if you think about it can you imagine you. it's got to be very frustrating even if you're a soldier let's face it if you're at war you know chances are you might get killed but i think as a human being it's got to be so frustrating you say we, we died like if like you said if we would have gone this way and that the way I wouldn't have had to die it, that's exactly what it was there still would have been a great loss of life yeah but it wouldn't have been as much yeah of course. it wouldn't have been as much if and what they were telling me was if they just came from across the other direction through that clearing between those trees that it wouldn't have been as great exactly. they wouldn't have had as much loss of life exactly and let's face it everybody's thinking I didn't have to die well, you know. and what was so sad was that the the the, uh, the soldiers weren't complaining. It was the higher ups who carried the guilt, oh. because they were the ones yeah. who were making the decisions of where to go, yes. and they they couldn't let go of that guilt. Yes, exactly, and yeah, because and it was they're really the ones sad. that sometimes. It was hard. You know, not all the time, depending on their rank, but they're the ones that sat on the hillside and overlooked the battlefield and were making decisions on on where to send, you know, troops or whatever, or, or divisions. So, yeah, I imagine that's got to, as a human being, if you have a conscience, it's got to weigh very heavy on you, really heavy. They did. They, they, it really did weigh heavy on them. And what I didn't know, that, what I didn't know until about two weeks before I went to Virginia the first time, I found this out in a totally non-paranormal fashion. <laughs> I had no idea um, that 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 land is literally covered in my ancestors. Really? Yes. Didn't know. Had no clue. Wow. No. So much so that when they were doing their final interview with me at Hollywood Cemetery in Richmond, Virginia, mm -hmm. um, Chris was filming me and he was asking me the questions and stuff. And I was getting eaten up by bugs. And so we, we were trying to move uh, a different to a different area. And plus, okay. the cars that we moved. We were going to move up here. And he's like, no, let's go down here. We turned, sat down. I turned my head. And five feet away from me is a big headstone, Pollard. That's my maiden name. Okay. We led right to it. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And I just started crying. I'm like... 
really? I already look like shit. It's humid as hell. You know, <laughs> it just was not good. Um, but isn't it also at the same time? But, yeah, I think that's why. That there's like, almost like that, that even though, what do they say about coincidences? There's no such thing? Mm -hmm. There's no such thing. We've actually found out that Gwen and I are, are more than likely related. Really? Back about 150 years ago. Isn't that incredible? It really is. <laughs> you guys got to take a DNA test. I know, right? Nowadays, um, it's like, I got, I did one a few years back, and I'm getting, I get emailed all this time. Now you got cousins, like, I don't want any more cousins. Like, I know. It. It's like, I get hounded enough as it is. Yeah. Let's just not No, nothing against you. But and, and, and the thing is that with DNA, it's inescapable, you know, when you exactly. know that, that there's a relation. Proven, that's it. <laughs> like, I'm um, good. Yeah. I'm like, good. I'm real happy with my family if I, if I start, you know. I might be disappointed. What can I say? <laughs> you know how that goes. But My you know, luck, I'll end up having a million cousins, and oh that's yeah, when I'll you know, it's like, and like I said, it's not like, you know how sometimes people before would say, oh, that was your cousin, but it was basically based on oral tradition of the family. But when you get it from a DNA source, it's like you, there's no escaping it. You that's know? my law. <laughs> right, and then you meet the person, you're like, I'm related to you? Oh. <laughs> can we backtrack? Yeah, it's like, yeah, that's it. You know what, oh, Vanessa, you were saying something, and, and I'm going to, I know that there's certain things that you can't talk about, but we were talking earlier before we started recording that you just came back from Staten Island uh, and that you were working on a project that you're going to eventually produce. And that's why I'm, I'm putting that out there, that there's only so much that you can talk about it, but... Talk about what you can talk about. <laughs> talk no, about right. what you can, which is, um, and, and I'm going to say part of it I know has to do with in what's considered an urban legend, which is the Cropsey urban legend. But yes. the other part of it is we're talking about an actual child victim. Absolutely. Um, the reason that we went there, uh -huh. the reason that, um, that Threefold Paranormal, which is the group that I'm a part of, okay. uh, one, one of the groups that, that I'm with, um, we went there because of Holly Ann Hughes, uh -huh. who was kidnapped, believed to be kidnapped. She literally disappeared off the street corner okay. uh, July 15th, 1981 at 9.30 p.m. So ironically, I was going to be there 36 years to the day wow. of her disappearance. And uh, we didn't even realize that is exactly how it was ending up when I got my flight. It just ha happened that way. Okay. Um, we... We, we were not um, well welcomed <laughs> from um, the community. Mm -hmm. we, were not, we were not very well welcomed. Granted, like I told you, we weren't silent. Which is surprising after so many years, right? Yeah. We weren't silent about what we were going there for. We, mm -hmm. we didn't make it hush hush. We were very public about it. And um, which, I mean, we did that on purpose. Uh, some uh, interviews that were set up were canceled at the last minute when people found out exactly what we were doing. Yeah. Some, mm -hmm. yeah, some were actually, um, we were actually able to do, but they couldn't be audio or videotaped. And, you know, we believe in being fair and being truthful. So we didn't even, we didn't do it. Okay. You know, we didn't audio tape it or nothing. Right. Um, so it will be an anonymous source. Um, very interesting information coming from that particular interview. Um, but we've we found a we found a lot of paranormal evidence that we actually have. We actually have it on videotape. Right. Uh, we have a, a picture that I showed you that I sent you yes, that is just which is incredible. In the, I mean, it's just undeniable. Yes, it's undeniable what's there. Mm -hmm. um, and I can tell the viewers that that picture was taken in an area where we believe there to be a lot of of people, a lot of people. Um, why do you that think was there was there is there something because something happened there or that's where they were left oh okay yeah. all right yeah so it's um there, there's a lot there um we were actually on willowbrook grounds the abandoned mental hospital okay uh, did a pendulum session there that's going to be on the uh, uh in the documentary okay i uh, did a pendulum session at the mausoleum 
of Jennifer Schweiger um, at the cemetery that she's buried in in New Jersey. We went out there in the middle of the night. Right. I actually caught that on videotape uh, with her answering my questions. I have a badass pendulum. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's real good. And um, handmade. Okay. Hand carved. It's beautiful. Um, but we got a lot of answers to our questions and we got so many more questions based on those answers. Right. Yeah, exactly. You, you, you went where it took you. It absolutely went where it took us. And I'm hoping, we're all hoping, um, that when we get this out there, because we want it done right. This yeah. isn't going to be, you know, slapped together. Uh -huh. um, and it's been 36 years since Holly's anyway, and we're not losing any time. Right. So we're hoping that once this gets out there, that it starts people asking the proper questions. Right. Yeah. Which leads one to believe that the way that the reception that you guys received from some people makes you think that there is more to than what's publicly acknowledged or done or whatever. Because normally, if not, people don't care. It's like, okay, well, yeah, this happened and blah, blah. It's like... Exactly. Without a doubt, um, that's the direction that it's leading us into. Um, and like I said, all we care about is finding answers, finding some type of closure. Uh, that, that's all we care about. You know, it's not about notoriety. It's not about people saying, oh, look at them. They're cool. They did this. No, has nothing to do with us. It's about these kids. And if we were willing to go there and do this because of these children, maybe another team will go to California and start looking into it. Or another team will go to Florida sure. and look into them. And they, they shouldn't be forgotten. Let me ask you something. Do you think that there's more victims that have never been found? Yep. yep. I'm going to it. Yeah. <laughs> Without a doubt, I'm not even going to stutter. Yep. yep. So, yes, people and, uh, don't realize how quickly uh, certain, you know, a human body can disintegrate. Oh, yeah. Well, and especially when it has help. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> I will tell you this, and for you and the viewers, if you will go onto my YouTube page uh -huh. and just make sure that you've already went to the restroom and that you're sitting down. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> go to my YouTube page under Vanessa Renee Hovel. Okay. And I have a 16 minute and 34 second video on there. Um, the breathing is not me. You really? can tell, and I am away from the girls. You can tell what's me and what isn't. Um, but right at about four minutes, okay, it, right after I say the legend of Cropsy, uh huh, about two or three seconds, and you tell me what you hear. I won't tell you what it is, but I can guarantee you, when you hear it the first time, you will never forget the sound of it. And it's not that they're saying something horrible. It's not that they're saying "help me" or crying. It's what they say and how they say it and it is crystal clear as a bell okay but you're talking they as in a collective they or was it one person one did one entity one person said this word okay and it's how they said it but there are multiple EVPs and we didn't even know we got them aren't those the we best they are the best um, Julia and I were laying on the bed in the hotel room deciding whether or not to upload this video. And so we're watching it. And as soon as that happens, we're both like, oh, we couldn't believe it. We, we rewound it like four or five times. Yes. Just to hear it over and over again. And we're like, it's, you can't not hear it. And when you do, it's, it'll, it, it brings tears to your eyes because you're like, that is confirmation in a way I can't even begin to describe. Yeah. I can't. Yes. It's not real. But I, I will say this when people are listening to it, after that, mm -hmm. when I go on right before I start talking about, hey, watch out for the vagrants if there's any, because right. there's going to be huffers here. Right. Mm -hmm. You hear it very distinctly and it's a man doing it. It's not me going, <gasps> Okay. <laughs> you can oh see my it's god because <coughs> if I do that I start coughing you can hear it plain as day 
Oh. Yeah. We were surrounded. We were surrounded. There was seven or eight, nine or ten buildings there. And we were at all of them. And it was awful. It was yes. awful. I believe it. I the the feelings left over from the people that do you think any. that what was happening pre because, because you know that whole thing was that there was um that basically all these what they consider children murders disappearances they kind of like all happened more or less in this set of time do you think that there's a lot of stuff that predates that just, just never there's a lot of nastiness associated with that hospital alone um, not to mention, you have people who have died on that property since then. You have vagrants mm -hmm. who have died on that property since yes. then. Um, it is, when, when y'all see the footage, when you go back and look at the footage, um, those grounds are covered. Wow. The only thing we had to walk on was the streets, the little, the little streets of the right. hospital. Yeah. Everything else is covered. It's nothing but forest and foliage and everything else um there's no getting away from it okay you know we had a teeny tiny little path broken through it to get up to this little street but everything else i mean if they ever do go in and bulldoze that like the flags that are on the trees are indicating um <laughs> i was about to ever, say yeah they're if they ever do that they're going to be bulldozing up some bodies well, I was about to say, if that happens and they build whatever they're going to build on there, you know that whoever occupies that space is going to be having experiences. Heaven, Jeff. <laughs> hell, half, half the compound's been turned into a, into a college. Really? I'm like, how dumb are you? <laughs> really? You know? Oh, my God. I what mean, was it the other day? I, I, a couple of days ago. God, I was just reading the paper on it that they were... Oh my God! I can't remember what city that they were that they were excavating the same thing. All of a sudden, they're bulldozing up all these coffins from the 1700s because surprise, all these bodies that were supposedly exhumed and moved <laughs> were yeah. never moved. Or yeah, exactly. maybe they took a couple just for like, oh yeah, yeah, we're moving the bodies, we're moving the coffins. No, and they're not. And I tell you what. Um, also, uh, I want to say it was Table Rock Lake in Missouri. Uh huh. That's a and double double check me on this because I could be getting the name wrong, but um, it's a uh, it's a man made lake. Okay. Over a cemetery. Guess what they didn't move. The Guess bodies. what was floating to the surface for years the in this lake. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm like, just move the damn bodies. Come on. You know what? You know, I mean, can you imagine, like, the large version of poltergeist where you're in a lake and not a pool and all of a sudden all these bodies are coming up? <laughs> I, gotta be so I just don't think I would ever recover from that. You know, I just don't think I would. Sorry, I'm having to text my son real quick. Keep his calling don't me. Don't worry about that. <laughs> but I, 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 you know, I, as a matter of fact, um, not too long ago, a few months back, you know, I got a tip of a, of, that I tell him that I call them what they call unofficial graveyards. Mm -hmm. And this is where, especially when you have towns that are coming up, you know, and all this stuff like embalmers, they're like, sometimes they're late on the, uh, arriving in the town when, you know, they're putting in the infrastructure. Bottom line, like down here in South Florida, when they were laying out the railroad that, you know, people come in from all parts of the country. And what was happening was, you know, you have all these accidents and all these transient workers that got killed. And a lot of these people, they had little or no money. They had sometimes no family or the family was like, no, don't ship them back to us. So basically uh, they had no embalmers and the main cemetery was a little bit further up. So guess what? They were just opening up. They would take a section of that plot over there. And it's like, just dump them there. And <laughs> basically it's like an unofficial graveyard because what are you going to do? You got to bury these people somewhere. You do, you do, and I'm agreeing you know, with the plan. And if like everybody that, thinks, it, and especially in an area, because, you know, at some point, you know, there's always, and I'm sure you've seen it in some towns, you know, you'll get like the churchyard has the graves 
or in some cases you'll get some homesteads where there's the graves but it takes a while sometimes to get an official cemetery going okay mm -hmm. and let me tell you something when you're talking a uh, victim that's got no family no money no nothing it's like yeah well dig a hole yeah you know over there in that over there that area go and open another hole and that's what we ha have an area down here which the same thing happened and supposedly a doctor owned it and when he was going to develop it he told everybody oh i'm gonna move the bodies you know <laughs> yeah right because I'm getting no. reports of stuff going on, and I'm thinking exactly what you just described. You're going to tell me that this guy was going to dig up bodies of unknown transient workers, which more than likely were never embalmed or maybe not even in a casket, because even then you had to pay for a casket. You know, they would exactly. just wrap them in a shroud and in you go. Mm -hmm. I, well, they it's, didn't it's, move nothing. <laughs> same thing in, and I'm probably going to get the name of this cemetery wrong. I think it's Blandford Cemetery, and that's in Virginia. Okay. Um, uh, I, I like to be tested. I like for people to test what I can do. Mm -hmm. And Chris and Gwen are the best at that because um, they won't keep, they won't tell me anything, but they'll drive me through a place backwards, you know, through the back way, and I'll tell them what I get, and then they'll verify it. Well, little shits did that with Central State Mental Hospital in Virginia. I was not happy, okay? <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> but... But I, I told them everything, and what was funny was as no sooner, I guess, did we enter what would be considered the grounds, I'm wanting to jump out of the car because I told I told them, I said, the bodies are right over there, and I need to go over there because that's where they're calling me to. And okay. they're like, no, we, we need to drive through here, and they still haven't told me where, where we're at. Okay. So I'm telling them all different things. Well, when we finally leave, Chris used to work at that at Central State, and he said... Where I was pointing is where they buried the bodies that only had numbers above their... They were the ones that they did experiments on. Okay? Are you kidding yeah. me? Oh, my God. Oh, ma'am, I'm not. Well, and then we went to Blandford Cemetery, if I'm getting that name right. Uh -huh. And they're like, okay, well, tell us what you're getting. So I'm walking around, and I'm getting your standard stuff. You know, you got your standard dead people. Right. And then I start to walk through what looks like a field. And Chris is like, why are you walking over there? I said, because they're all over there. I said, they're all over there. And then they're all uh, across this tree line. They're in that area over there. And I said, and they're separated by who they came with or where or where they lived at. I said, but they're all over there. And there's nothing that indicates this. It looks like flat land. Come to find out, it's Civil War and Revolutionary War soldiers who were buried by the insignias on their uniforms. Right. In, in other words, place. it was a mass burial. Yeah. You know, but I, I didn't know that. I, exactly. And it, so you're like, you're going, yeah, right. You don't have the filter of what you know, you know, versus what you're getting, the information that you're getting. So there was no exactly. reason. Exactly. I'm just going to, that's all I'm ever going to do is, and by the way, you're breaking up really bad. You are um, too. All I'm ever going to do is tell people what I get. If I'm right great if i'm not that's okay too somebody else will be right <laughs> i i don't i i don't expect perfect myself or anybody else but you know what uh you totally froze though darling okay i uh, i'm still getting you now you froze a little bit okay but okay don't worry we i you're still coming across you're you're transmitting as far as your okay. as your voice don't worry about it but you know what, okay. Vanessa, in a lot of times, and I imagine going through some of these places where it's a state mental, you know, that's got to be confusing because, you know, you've got discarnates there that their grip on reality, you know, yeah. is not well, what. At Central State, it was so bizarre. Um, and I felt like such a bitch when I was trying to explain this. But it's like I told him, I said, it's like on this side, you have your manix. Yes. You have your wall scratchers. You have your your mm -hmm. biters. You have your pinchers. You have your hitters. You've got just hysteria. Right. But on this side, and I hate, I, I use movies a lot to describe what I'm, what I'm seeing and right. feeling. But I'm, I, I'm like, if you remember the movie Overboard, mm -hmm. on this side, you've got your eat your checkers variety. Yes. You know, I mean, yeah. And I, it sounds like I'm making fun, but 
that's the best way I can differentiate from it. It's like yes. these these are the ones where I wouldn't want to be in a room with them, and these yeah. are the ones where I'm like, okay, they're a little they're a little out there, they're hurting a little, but but I get it. Yeah, you know. And he said I was absolutely right. He said that is where they kept the violent, um, the the ones that that you definitely wouldn't want to be in a room alone with. Yeah. And over here was more of the, you know, the the, the non-violent but must be institutionalized people. And people don't realize, you know what? Unfortunately, Vanessa, I'll, and I understand that sometimes people were institutionalized when they shouldn't have been, but a good portion of the people that were there were there for good reason because you know sometimes they make it look like a bunch of people were being put in there against their will and it was like yeah that happened but in the majority there was a lot of people that it wouldn't have been safe for them for anybody for them to True. they needed to be institutionalized you know and the sad though 100 years ago i would have been institutionalized <laughs> i hate to say it but yeah <laughs> no i'm not saying it i was at where was it i was at um trans allegheny uh, uh -huh. at that sanitarium and I was looking at the records of the people that had been institutionalized there and yeah some of them deserved it but some of the things it was like are you kidding me they put people away for this <laughs> oh yeah I would have been institutionalized without really a doubt scary. if I if I came out publicly doing what I do oh yeah I would have been institutionalized yeah. or killed yeah <laughs> Well, no, in truth, it was if they thought you were hallucinating or, I mean, some of the things, I, I, they had like even a list of things that people would mm -hmm. be committed for. And some of them are, are you kidding me? It was like really innocuous, like this could apply to like, the greater portion of the population. Exactly. Yeah, it was exactly. a real eye opener. It was a real eye opener when you saw some of the stuff that people, uh, being sad, <laughs> Okay. Yeah. 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 Institutionalized but somebody for depression. depression, but it was and but really, really arbitrary stuff. And I'm thinking, you know what? Um, it. You know, thankfully, things have changed. You know, in yeah. the sense of that now. You know, they try to keep people out, even though I think there's some people that should have been put away. But well, you, know, you bring up a very good point. You like to think they've changed, but while we were in Staten Island in New York City okay. was um, the Witches Conference, okay. which we couldn't go to because we were so busy doing what we were doing, Okay, but they still had protesters really? basically saying that we need to burn in hell. Oh my God, are you serious? In 2017, there were protesters at a Witches Conference in New York City. 2017. In New York City? We need to places. burn in hell. Yeah. You know what? So I mean, there are still witch hunts out there. There really are, and they—they're not as violent or as right. upfront as they used to be, mm -hmm. but it's still going on hundreds of years later, yes. and it's sad and it's scary. Yes, it is. I'm part of groups. People are messaging me all the time saying, "Do not allow this person onto your page because they are—they are trying to get information against people like myself." Right. You know, to, to put in a database. Are you serious? I'm dead serious. That's like... That's... that's yeah. Terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I choose life. You know, I mean... That's Absolutely. Why we, I mean, there are people, yeah, there are people on Facebook that got four or 5,000 friends. I have 600 and I think 70-something. Because I keep it low because... Not everybody needs to know my business. They Absolutely can see me not. on Instagram or Twitter. Yes. And I've got a YouTube channel. Yes. But not everybody needs to be all up in my business. Yes. You and, know. <laughs> so. And you know what? And this is and this is the truth, Vanessa. If it was just a question, I, I'm all for let's agree to disagree. That's I'm cool Absolutely. with that. Absolutely. The problem is exactly what you said. When you start getting a person that just not just disagrees with you but actually can become violent. And unfortunately, there's a lot of those running around out there. Whatever it is that they got against you, it, it could be anything, you know, just that in their, you know, it just goes against what they think and they just think the earth or whatever is better off with either out you or whatever you represent. And yeah, exactly. I, I understand totally. And the thing is that the internet has made it a lot easier for yes, people to do that. You know. It, it really 
has. I mean, it's a blessing and a curse all in one. Yes. You know, um, but I mean, I'm I'm so I'm so careful now. Yes, you have that. To. I'm almost to the point of being paranoid mm -hmm. about certain things. But I have a child. Yes. You know, I have a. You know, thank heavens. You know that I mean, my my child is obviously safe. But thank heavens, my you know my actual career. I'm a dental assistant. Mm -hmm. You know, thank heavens they know me and and understand what I do and support me. I'm very very lucky in that. Right. But I've received death threats. Really. Because because I don't have time to do a reading for every single person that contacts me. I have a job. Exactly. I have a kid. You have life. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And, exactly. Yeah. You know, I've actually received death threats for that. Because you didn't have time to give. Because I didn't have time to do a reading. Isn't it scary that to think that you actually would have actually had maybe received that person as a client, and that they're mm -hmm. willing to? Let me tell you something. Um, I have a good friend of mine. She's still a good friend of mine. She's uh, she's now in uh, she lives in Northern California, but she's originally from Oklahoma. She's mm -hmm. a Choctaw, and you know, mm -hmm. but her family went ended up after the Dust Bowl out in California. But anyway. Mm -hmm. Uh, she's a witch, and um, mm -hmm. I remember one time we were talking about something, and I told her, oh, and she goes, no, you know what, Marlene, I got to keep a low profile. I was like, what are you talking about? To me, it was like, she goes, yeah, because the town she lived in, it's not really that small, but it's a mid-sized town. We're kind of Which like... Which one was it? In what town? Merced. Uh-huh. And okay. um, she was telling me, oh, what was it? I can't remember what the situation was, where she was kind of basically telling me, and, and she's... She's not a shy person uh, where it was like discretion. And I was like, what are you talking about? She goes, yeah. She goes, you'd be surprised, you know, uh, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. it, it can work oh, against yeah. you and you, the people you least expect. And I was like, are you kidding me now? And she's like, yeah, yes. Oh, yeah. She's not kidding. I live in the only town in Oklahoma I will live in. <laughs> I, 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 seriously, it's the only place that I that. I actually feel even somewhat welcome. Okay. You know, um, but I it, it's it's really bad. I actually I've done this for years for free. Mm -hmm. I don't do free readings anymore. I wouldn't. Um, I did a show for Paranormal Zone TV, and I woke up the next morning to seven hundred messages. Oh. For readings. <laughs> so I I actually started charging. Here recently, I charged fifty dollars a reading to weed out the crazies. And you absolutely <laughs> have to, and you absolutely yeah. have to. I totally agree with Be you. Yeah, it's just it's unreal. It's and, unreal. And you know what, Sorry. Uh, Vanessa? Unfortunately, there has been a lot of times where people think, oh, you know, especially when it comes to something like like a reading, where people think, oh, if you're charging for it, you know, like like there's something wrong with it. I'm like, no, there's nothing wrong with it. You know, this is your time using your ability, just like if you hired somebody to do your books. You yeah. pay for it. Well, see, that, yeah, that's the thing is I never felt comfortable charging for it because I, I, I figured it, I, I was okay with other people doing it. But for me, it just, it hurt my heart right. to do it. It hurt my heart to try to charge for it. Yeah. But now, you know what? Um, no. <laughs> no, absolutely I'm tired. not. I absolutely not. Far. I've worked two jobs for four years. Okay. And what? Two, you know, seven days a week for three. <coughs> and I'm like, I'm not doing it anymore because I wasn't sleeping so I could help other people. No. You know <coughs> this what? This is how you can. T this is how you can tell that that huffing sound isn't me on the on the the video. Mm -hmm. I did that one time and I can't quit coughing from it. Wow. <laughs> it's not me. <laughs> well, let me tell you something. I'm. Personally, I'm glad to hear that you're charging. <laughs> you know what? Yeah. And like you said, uh, if somebody wants, like you said, it'll weed out the people that uh, that see no value in it. Absolutely. When a lot of people tarot hop, they want they go from reader to reader yeah. to reader that they can find free until they get the answer they want. Oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> and see what exactly. I, when I do a reading. You're not allowed to tell me anything. Yeah. <laughs> I give you the entire reading before you're allowed to speak. Right. And if I'm doing it and if I'm doing it face to face, I'm out. Because I don't want anything to taint my reading. Right. 
I don't want you to, to move your eye a certain way or accidentally nod your head. I want the reading to be as true as it can possibly be without interference. Exactly. And then ask, ask questions. You know, I don't like to be fed information at all on a, on a case or a reading. Well, you know, I'm what? a strict sucker. Well, you know what those, no, I, you know, and I totally understand. These are the standards that you've set for yourself, okay, which is great. I think it's fantastic. I think it's absolutely fantastic, you know, and, uh, but at the very least, you know, like what you yeah. were saying that when I, you were in New York, I, that you, that, that, um, yeah, you know, there, I think that there's always going to be people like that, no matter what it is. You know, there's always going to, in other words, whatever you, there's always, for some reason, there's always the, the, the fringes that I think that they oh, yeah. get their kicks from opposing somebody or some group or something. It's just, they're unhappy and like, you know, they just want to make everybody miserable and, you know, being a witch is like, that's like sometimes, you know, there's always going to be people and, and they got to pick something. And, but you know what? I know there's a lot of people that are going to go, ah. those, sometimes those people that you see out there sometimes those are the ones that go and contact somebody for a reading mm -hmm. unbeknownst <laughs> to mm -hmm. I know that to be true uh -huh. <laughs> yeah yes. I, yes I have done for people before who came to me in private mm -hmm. I gave the reading I knew too much so they told me I was going to burn in hell for it <laughs> you're kidding I'm like, what? Would you have been happier if I didn't know? Is that not why you came? Yeah, but sometimes they, Is were, that... they were thinking you were not going to be that good. Well, oops. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you have to believe in hell to burn in it. Exactly. <laughs> you, exactly. you know, I've been through hell. I'm good. You know, I mean, it's, yeah, nothing, nothing's coming at me now, but... But yeah, it's just it's just one of those things. You you hit all kinds. You see all kinds. You meet all kinds. It takes all kinds. Yes. You know, course. and that's that's what we found out. You know, um, do I hope people stay tuned to find out what happens with that case? I certainly do. Oh God, yes. Yeah. Because all let me these, tell you something. From what you described, there's absolutely more there than what oh yeah. is commonly known. In other words, you know. Oh yeah. Um, all the all the, the the stuff is being sent to me, and I'm going to make sure that that gets put together properly. I have somebody um, online to do that for me, and uh, and then once everything is is put together and it's viewed by those of us in, you know on the team, mm -hmm. and it's the way that we want it, then it'll be released for everybody else to see, and then they can they can come they can draw their own conclusions, okay, and uh, see what they would like to do with that. Um, Again, though, um, for the other stuff, by all means, please, please, please. I, I just put a thing on Facebook Live about this uh, yesterday. I'm tired of all these shows on TV that, that produce crap getting all this recognition. Go out onto YouTube and search out teams that are putting in their blood, sweat, and tears. Yes. I've given the names of two of them already. I, I could actually, um, Ectovision, people mm -hmm. need to check them out on YouTube. Um, Scott Latia, he's got some some great stuff. Everybody needs to check him out. Okay. NP Paranormal, they need to check him out. Beyond Perception Investigators, they need to check them out. Uh, if, if they go on Facebook to um, <clears throat> uh, them out, giving the views and the likes and the consideration to these teams who are busting their ass yeah. on a weekly level to get proper stuff out there for us to see. Not something with a bunch of CGI and special effects and bull crap. So, I said that out loud. I should be good. Sorry. You know, well, and, and the truth is that, that doing that work, sometimes it can be boring as heck. You know, Hell yeah. and uh, sometimes you can validate information. Other times you can't because especially if it happened a long time ago or was unrecorded, you know, not everything gets recorded I would, and any I would, witnesses are long dead. So, oh yeah, I would rather watch an hour of somebody doing the job and not getting a damn thing 
than somebody that's in a class. <laughs> no, I, I, I really agree. would. Well, but you know what? That's unfortunately, you know, that's not always going to, that, that, that's not what I really know. drives views as far as the, you know, once you're, you're in, you know, you're working or you're beholding to some channel or to some producer, you know, they're always going to be looking at, yeah, we don't care how accurate or how truthful but, all we care about is, are people going to watch it and keep watching it? But here's the thing, they'll care when it's them. Oh, sure. And that's what they don't realize. They'll care when it's them. If it was their loved one, oh, if yeah. it was their kid or their grandma, they'll care. Yes. You know? Course. And so, I mean, yeah, people can watch this other stuff for entertainment purposes. Just realize that, and not you, because I know you realize, but I want the viewers to understand, just realize it's a whole lot more complicated than what they show. Oh, sure. And you actually get real paranormal activity evidence. It is nothing like what they're showing you on TV. Of course not. And when it's true, your jaw drops and you have a hard damn time picking it back up. We we had something that I actually can't go into, but I can tell you this. Okay. Um, we had something up in Staten Island that this was this was direct directly with me. The girls were filming it, mm -hmm. and it, it happened at a particular cemetery there. And when the connection was made right there in front of our eyes as to who I was speaking with, and they found their grave. Yeah. I was like, okay, I'm done. We got to go now because this is too much for me. So uh, to me, if you, I mean, I don't know how other people are, but for me, if I ever lose that, the shock of being right, I need not ever be in this field again. And I need to always be shocked that I'm right. And you know what, Vanessa, sometimes it's like you said, it's <clears throat> not whether you get to capture it on video or record it or even have a witness okay but when you yourself personally have that first-hand understanding that you can that you're getting something that it's like like you said you, you're the worst skeptic as far as dismissing anything that it could be other than have a supernatural origin when you find yourself actually thinking god this is real this is this is real you know sometimes it i don't know personally to exactly. me exactly that's that's all i need I, it's like I I understand it, and I know I'm oh, yeah. not fooling myself, and I know that what I'm hearing or getting or whatever the uh, whatever is like, okay, I've gone off my checklist of what it's not, so what I'm left with is this is exactly. a genuine, authentic, uh, supernatural occurrence, communication, whatever whatever it is, you know, and it's absolutely. Like, it's like okay, so nobody. If nobody ever believes me, I don't care because I See, know. See, but you're so right. You're so right. I would. T I tell people this all the time. I have no need to prove myself to anybody. Yeah. They don't need to believe in ghosts. They mm -hmm. don't need to believe in haunting. Yeah. They don't need to believe in any of that because of me. Because I'm not proving it to you. I already know it exists. I don't need you to. I don't need you to believe me. Good. Good for you if you don't. I don't have that option. Right. But I don't need you to believe me. My, my perception of the situation, nor my, nor my belief in myself, rises or falls based on somebody else's. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So, and it's and like as long, they, as long as it meets your, your criteria internally, absolutely. Um, then that's it. That's, it's like, hey, if you believe me, fine. If you don't, that's fine. It doesn't matter because I know what I know and what I understand and uh, the rest is, you know, but yeah. Ex but such is the, the nature of this type of um, of getting involved with this in this field. Absolutely, you're absolutely right. It's it's a weird field to be in. Yeah, you know? very interesting. <laughs> it's, it's a it weird is. field it to is. be in. It is. It is. I wouldn't have chosen this for myself. I wouldn't have chosen this for myself. Yeah, but you know some. But then you know what? It's also the kind of sometimes when, we're on, when you're in it you're like like exactly like what you said I wouldn't have chosen it but there may be some point in time you look back and you go I can see why <laughs> I mean you know I ended up doing I, what I, I do it's a, I think it's the understanding yeah I think it's the understanding I think that's why it's, it's like those little that, that was that, that saying that says 
you know, I didn't choose the thug life. The thug life chose me. Mm-hmm. You know, true story. You know, um, but I, and like I said, like you and I were talking about, I think it's because I'm understanding that I'm not, I'm not judgmental. Right. You know, um, when I went into the Horsefly Chronicles house, um, I, I told them what, how I was going in there. I told them what my purpose was. Um, okay. Julia and Phil. And <clears throat> it was very simple. I wasn't going in there saying, okay, spirits, perform for me. Right. Time to turn into a circus monkey. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I went in there to ask for guidance and help in the upcoming case. And I could not have been more welcomed. Okay. A complete different vibe than anybody else has gotten in there, to my knowledge. Well, that was what I was yeah. about to say. Yeah. From what I had heard, it was like, that's that's not usually what people get. Now, it was, I walked into that room and it was like they opened up their arms. And I was grateful. Like I said, the mirror, different story. Um, <laughs> Why do you think that is? see that in the video. Huh? Why do you think that is? It's, a, it's like the portal. Okay. It's, that's the portal room, but that mirror is the portal. We actually got shit in that mirror that freaks me out a little bit. And it's not necessarily that it was trying to hurt me or nothing like that. I was seeing too much, and I became uncomfortable with it. Yeah. Yeah, there is such a thing. You know. But, but and yeah, you know. But everything else in the room was very loving, very comfortable to me. Um, I did not feel in fear or in danger at all. I was in there for 15 minutes by myself. Okay. Doing a live feed. Um, that was not the only time I was in there. I was in there with others um, at the beginning um, doing a pendulum session um, in front of the portal. And then we had the portal uh, mir- the portal mirror situation. Um, then I did uh, just Phil and I right. in the room um, doing another pendulum session. And then me completely by myself. Okay. And was it different when you were by and yourself? Was, it was different, but they were not mean to me. They didn't try to take me over. They didn't try to hurt me. Okay. Um, it was very comfortable. Had they have taken the mirror out of the room and everyone else just stayed in there, the spirits, I could have slept in there. Really? Okay. Yeah. I, I, I felt protected. Okay. I felt very protected. Um, and when anyone watches that and they see who I'm asking questions to with the pendulum, they'll see They'll see why. Um, okay. <laughs> I, I wasn't alone. I, I had help in there. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, a, a lot of this has to do with how you go into something, what sure. your expectations are, um, remembering respect. You can't get it if you don't give it. Sure. And, uh, you know, just treating spirits. I mean, even even though they're dead, treating them how you'd want to be treated. It's not that hard. No. Golden rule doesn't die when you do. Yeah, I mean, it's it's there for a reason. Yeah. You know. And you know what, Vanessa? And I wanted to. I I know that you know we talked about this beforehand, and I want to bring it up because I think this happens a lot of time to people who work in the paranormal field. And you mentioned to me something that you kind of like, I'm going to say it, you busted your ass earlier and you hurt your ribs. Okay. Uh And you told me, I think that I brought something or somebody back with me. And I want you to address it because I think a lot of people that are involved in the paranormal and come in contact with it don't realize that it can happen. And and stuff like this can happen to you. It absolutely can. Um, not just today, but I brought stuff back before mm-hmm. from Virginia. It took a good three weeks to recover. Okay. It was that bad. Um, this, I feel better spiritually okay. than I did when I came back from Virginia. But I'm not myself physically. I broke a toe yesterday. I fell up. Yeah, you told me. Yeah. You didn't tell me about the today. toe thing, though. And I know that's very painful. Yeah, it is. It- it hurts like a bitch. Um, but I fell up concrete stairs today, uh, sprained my ankle, um, hurt my knees, uh, hit my ribs on the cement stairs, right. bruised my ribs. Um, and I don't know if it's that I've got something necessarily with me or if I'm so drained by what was with me sure. that, I, that I, I'm that i not focusing. Could be, But I've yeah. been up and down Could these be that. stairs. 
you know, two, three, four times a day for a year now. Never once fell up them, but I did today. Um, but I, I need to do, I haven't, because I came straight back home and went mm -hmm. straight to work and I haven't stopped since, I haven't taken care of myself in a proper way. Right. Since coming back from, from such a heavy investigation mm -hmm. that I, right. as soon as we're off here, I'm going to be taking care of that. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to be taking care of that. Okay. Um, I still have a whole lot of stage and stuff to do. Yeah, and that's the reason why I brought it up. Because since yeah. I've been doing investigations since the 90s, I have got around the corner from wherever I was. I don't care if nothing happened. And I would sage myself in my car. And I remember I would have some people from other teams or from other people look at me like, what is she doing? And I was like, uh, yeah, I'm doing this because I don't want either a hitchhiker or stuff to happen, uh -huh. okay, uh, when when I get home. Exactly. And I could tell I some of them would look at, the smarter ones that have been around for a while would say, okay, I get it. Hey, Marlene, can you spare some? I know, right? And then others uh, would look at me uh, like, um, what is she doing? There's a lot of times, you know, you know, we're not going to discuss. Sometimes we would say, okay, let's go to the gas station, the corner of the McDonald's, and let's talk about what we, you know, you're not going to do it in front of the client's house. And I would, yeah. that's when I would, I'd open up my trunk of my car and just everything, everything would get saged, you know? And oh, yeah. I'm like, what are you doing? And I was like, what am I doing? Yeah, this is the time to do it. This is the place to do it. Because, like I have you said, you look whole experience. <laughs> and I you know what? Whole... And I tell them, guys, don't go because nothing ever really happened. They might have been hiding out, looking at all of us going, oh, yeah, yeah. That doesn't mean anything. Just because you didn't get a reading or you didn't get a photograph or you didn't get anything doesn't mean nothing was there. Yeah, sometimes there isn't anything there. But just in case, it can't hurt. <laughs> so It's always better safe than sorry. And I made sure that while I was there, I had protection. I had protection yeah. on me. Um, I made sure I had my dragon's blood with me. I had my protection amulets with me. Mm -hmm. I had a, a handmade one from Gwen. I had another Labradite. Uh, from Joyce um, here in Oklahoma, I was set, yes. you know, but when I got home, I didn't take care of business like I should. And uh, that's my fault. Yes. I should have done it. But I, I had, you know, and, and, and like you said, and maybe it's just that maybe you're just tired. It could be that it's simple. You're just really tired. Kind, you know, all right. I'm looking at you and you're like, I don't buy that. I know. <laughs> Uh, it's better safe than sorry. Yeah, I agree. And I, I didn't totally agree. What I preach. I totally agree. So, I totally yeah. agree. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, y'all can tell how tired I am. I know. I know. Thank you so much, <laughs> Vanessa. Thank you so much for spending this time. It has been fantastic, and I'm hoping that. Thank you. When are you gonna come out with the rest of that information about that, all this stuff that you did in the last few weeks? with the Cropsy and everyone uh, else? Hopefully, I'll have it done by next month, but that's not a guarantee. Sure, There's so much information. And okay. we want it done right. Mm -hmm. We want it done right. Sure. I but um, yeah, you want to... Any, like yeah, um, any stuff that we put out there that we can put out there right now will be on Threefold Paranormal, mm -hmm. which is on Facebook. Um, okay. By all means, please go on there and join. And... Uh, They'll be able to see what we've got, some of the things that we've been able to put out so far. Okay. Um, but other than that, we'll just we'll put on what we can as we can. But we want the full, we want it to be in full documentary form, from okay. beginning to end. And that way, people just they get it all and they can well, digest the situation. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I'm I'm going to put a link to your uh, to Facebook for you you know, on your behalf on the credits so that if anybody wants to go over okay. there and they can, you know, link to something else. And also you said on YouTube you had published something about something that the happened video. to you. Yeah, see, I, yeah, I, I, I wanna, I'm going to go look at that now. <laughs> Please just, do. And I, comments are welcome yes, on, okay. my page, on my YouTube page. Um, anything that anybody sees or hears on there, by all means, because nobody's perfect and sees everything, by all means, put it on there. Yeah. I will go back and look at this thing as many times as possible and mm -hmm. verify, you know, what's being said. Because y'all might catch something we don't get. Yeah. The more eyes, the better. Okay? So I appreciate you. So when are you going out and investigating Gilgo Beach? <laughs> <laughs> 
where's that at? And how can I get there? That's up there. <laughs> that's up there. That's the one where they had that, 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 the, it's right there. Right where you were at, where they had all these, for years, all these prostitutes turning up dead. And, oh, up in um, New York? Yeah, Gilgo Beach, like that, right up there where you were at, Staten Island, uh, all that, up there. G-I-L-G-O. No, we, uh, we, didn't, we didn't go there, but I'm hoping to go back to Staten Island. You know what? Look I'm that up because back. that's a really interesting a case that is, even though we're talking, we're not talking children, you know, we're talking prostitutes. Um, There's still people. It's uh, a lot of them, the bodies were recovered. You know, some of them... It's, what happened was a lot of them had gone missing and because of their lifestyle they were like uh, it could have been anything then it turns out that they found a bunch of their bodies especially even one with the, their child their toddler which mm -hmm. they're thinking that maybe she brought the child along you know no. uh, because she was she met somebody and she didn't have a babysitter so she brought the child with her and whoever it was killed them both and there's yeah. always been a question of is it more than one serial killer that was using this stretch as a dumping ground um, no no um okay and i'm just going by what i'm being told right now but the okay. woman that was with her toddler yeah the woman that she was with was actually more than just a john um yeah. he was there was the beginnings um or actually more than the beginnings there was a relationship there and this i mean it was um more than just a a paid exchange really i'm wow. saying yes there was a personal relationship there so it's very he possible. killed her God, and yes. child. yeah as much as those that it was not a, it was not a prostitute john situation right and, and this is the thing that they haven't well so far the cases are unsolved they they've never they've never been able to solve them like i said theories are that maybe one is in other words, there's more than one, because unfortunately, some of them have been found years afterwards. Okay, and then they started, once they, I think they found one, that they started looking along um, the area, and then that's when they started digging up and finding more, and that's when they realized, okay, we have a dumping ground for somebody, some serial killer, that I guess so far they had realized, hey, nobody comes out here to look for anything. And, I need uh, and to research it because the guy that I'm seeing in my head is around 43 years old and I don't know when these happen so I don't know if he was 43 when they were happening right or what but the guy that I see in my head is because it's weird because you wouldn't have pictured this prostitute and her child with someone who looked like this right but it was one of those pretty woman situations yeah. where he was uh, you know what I mean yes um he's 43 years old he's He's a tall man. He's 6'2", 6'3". He's about 180, 185 pounds. He's very thin. He has large hands. He's losing the hair up here, but what hair he does have on the side of his head is um, blonde going to gray. So it wow. looks like a, it looks almost like an ash blonde because mm -hmm. it's got gray in it. Right. Um, very pale skin, longer nose that comes down. He's not somebody she would have been attracted to, right. but he's somebody that said he would take care of her and her kid. And then something happened that made him mad and he killed both of them. You know what? I know that they've looked, um, I know that the police department that's out there has been mm -hmm. criticized because of the way they handled the investigation. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard of that before? <laughs> but yeah, as a matter of fact that even, uh, I don't wanna say if it was the chief, it's not there any longer, I mean, uh, there's been a lot of finger pointing that like in other words that because they were prostitutes mm -hmm. uh, number one they weren't really looked into as far as hey they didn't move to another town especially when the family was saying look she might have been a prostitute and some of them of course had drug problems but they would not have just stopped calling me and mm -hmm. I know that there's a lot of finger pointing in the sense that they didn't follow up because of their lifestyle uh, and even after they found evidence, you know, the bodies, they didn't, they didn't look as hard as they should have at, you know, possible sources, you know, I have to go up there now, <laughs> look it up, look it up. I think it's a super interesting case and, yeah. um, and it's unfortunate because you, that's my dog's having a moment. Um, the, 
I think that happens a lot of times, especially when the victims, and we talked about that earlier, even when you have children victims, if they come from a social, social economic, mm -hmm. you know, that when stuff happens, like what you said, that they disappear mm -hmm. sometimes. It reminds me of a book I read when I was young called Animal Farm. Mm -hmm. And there's a, the book ends, I think it's the very last thing that's ever written in the book, but it, it's so true to this situation to most situations, but really this, um, it's, it's very moving. It says, you know, it's painted on the side of the barn where it said all animals are created equal. Well, at the end it's marked out and it says, but some are more equal than others. Yeah. Exactly. And that's exactly what this is. And they might be prostitutes. They're still human beings. Of course, they of course, of course they are. And that's what child. I think that and a lot me, of times that's happened the, in more than that, that situation, you know, that yeah i mean you could say whatever you want to say that because driven by their addiction who, god knows it could be a million you know you could but still like you said they're human beings and don't get me wrong i understand that as far as a police it's really difficult to track somebody as far as a possible um you know who's mm -hmm. a perpetrator if you've got a person that's getting into cars with strangers i get it i believe me i understand that but at the same time a lot of times they really don't do unless like let's say like the green river that all of a sudden you've got 50 <laughs> you know women that have been killed and then it's like okay i think the numbers are overwhelming so we need to now look exactly. at it uh and, and try to find whoever it is but even if they don't even if they look at it and i can't believe i'm going to say this but even if they look at it as well this this was their lifestyle and it's going to be too hard mm -hmm. to find out where they went, they should still always question the disappearance of a person because nine times out of ten, if somebody disappears, yeah, somebody is responsible for it. Right, and you, you know don't what? Yourself. And if you, um, <laughs> most of these things, you know, when they talk to either the family or even other prostitutes, that you know, after a while, especially if you're a streetwalker, you kind of know. They'll talk to them and they'll say, yeah, like, uh, let's say when, when they were aware that somebody, that there was a predator out there amongst themselves, they would say, be careful. And some of them would say, I know that when I stop seeing this person, something happened to her. Because sometimes even amongst themselves, yeah. maybe it's family, they'll say, hey, I'm going to blow town for a while and I'm going to go to Atlantic City, for example, for a while. But they stay in touch. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly. what if they're having trouble with a John or, or, or with their, their pimp or whatever, they'll say something. Yeah. They, they, they kind of like, they, they, they make a phone call, whether it's a friend or a family member. And I mm -hmm. think that it, when they interview a lot of the family members, you can tell they're really frustrated because it's like, nobody's paying attention to me when I keep telling them that my niece, my daughter, my cousin, my sister, whoever would just not stop calling me. Yeah. And, um, but yeah, look into it. I think it's one of the most interesting. And I think that unfortunately that scenario plays out a lot, a lot more than people want to think of, oh, yeah. you know, and, oh yeah, or like you said, like, you know, what you were talking about in that cropsy where certain bodies were never found, you know, no victim, no crime. Yeah. You know, that exactly. kind of thing, especially if you're an adult and you can go wherever you want, supposedly. Exactly. So. There was just... So, so many eyes need to be opened. <laughs> yeah, <of laughs> they course. really do. Of course. You know, yeah. we, we should just, we should never let that go. No, no. Uh, again, I agree with you. You know, there are certain cases where it's just like, what, what the fuck, you know? Yeah, exactly. Well, anyway, Vanessa, let me let you go but because I know be. you got your things to do. Yeah. Thank you so much for spending this time. I really, truly appreciate it. It's been a fantastic interview, Thank darling. You. Okay. Thanks. All right, Take I'll care. talk to you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> Need I say more? <laughs> okay, guys. Um, you know, uh, Vanessa, as you could tell, she's, uh, you know, she's a regular person who happens to be psychic, a medium. I'm sorry, I take that back. Medium, because that's really important. I've said that before. Not all psychics are mediums. And it sounds like sometimes I, I think she wishes she wasn't a medium because... You know, uh, even, you know, before we were talking that it's been kind of recent that she's kind of like put her foot down as far as, okay, my dog, stop it. Um, 
stopping you know all these that want to communicate just like from like stepping in and you know intruding on her life and um i'm gonna go check out that her youtube like, right away um and you know what we were, what she was talking about which you know again she's limited on what she could describe was that urban legend of cropsy up in staten island which had to do with a bunch of children that went missing not all their bodies were found and eventually they did put somebody in jail and even then there's been a lot of second guessing number one if he's responsible if that person is responsible for everything okay and this um a lot of these disappearances and things happened back in the 80s uh and i i can't wait for her to come out and um she went out there uh one of the girls that she went up there is Phil Syracuse's wife from the Horsefly Chronicles. They went up there because she was a schoolmate, I believe, with that one girl that um, that was considered one of the victims. That's why she had a special personal interest in it, and that's why they went up there. Uh, so, yeah. And... You know what? A lot of people could say, well, you know what? Looking at any type of crime from a paranormal or a psychic angle is very subjective, possibly. But a lot of times you get a lot of information that otherwise is just not available, especially when you're talking way after the fact. OK, there's somebody in jail. This is what we were discussing. Um, and maybe that person is guilty of certain things, but that doesn't mean that they did everything and especially when it comes to uh crimes against children you know the community they want something done the police needs to perform and they better cough up uh a perpetrator and once they got one sometimes unfortunately and i'm not gonna uh they they stop looking for other guilty parties and not try to hang everything on that one person which i don't know the specifics so i'm just generalizing on that on that subject but i think that's going to be a super super interesting um and even what she described where even after so many years uh when they went up there they still had people she and she said it she said it the people that were living in that area when this occurred were very hesitant or did not want to speak to them period and people that had moved to the area after this happened they were willing to talk about it so as we were discussing, when you see certain ones that are like, no, we're not going to talk about it, or yeah, we're going to discuss it, but don't tape me, don't film me, or anonymity is demanded. Yeah, you can have one person that's got their own theory. When you start getting more than one source doing that, something's going on. So I can't wait to see what comes of that. I think that's a super interesting angle to this case. And uh, anyway, guys, uh, I hope subscribe to the channel hope you like the video okay thank you so much for viewing uh catch me live streaming uh mostly on my facebook and on twitter via periscope uh in about a couple of weeks i should have my fur my book coming out um i'm finishing up the details on that i hope you guys are going to really like it it's very interesting it's got a paranormal slant and old west you know what can i say soil doves gunslingers can't get any better than that so anyway guys thank you so much today is sunday have a fantastic rest of the week take care